coastal countries are particularly exposed to a rise in sea level and other effects of climate change. For example, the Netherlands and Bangladesh. Both countries are located in large delta areas where major rivers discharge. Water dominates the landscape. It is everywhere. Much of the land lies at sea level or even below. Each centimetre rise in sea level is a threat. Both countries are densely populated. Bangladesh even three times more than the Netherlands. The Netherlands have already struggled for centuries with protecting the country from the water. However, climate change brings new problems. Its effect on the country and its people can already be seen. Uh, four major problems we are facing and uh, the first one is the, the, the ecosystem health. The second one are heat waves, especially in cities, but the two major ones are the fresh water availability and uh, and, and flooding, the probability or the, the hazard of flooding. You can have flood because of uh, storm surge and big s storms from sea, but you can also have flood from uh, uh, rainfall. When it comes to flooding, we are facing, like Bangladesh, two major problems. The one is the, the, the expected sea level rise, and from the other side, there's uh, the expected increase of peak discharges from mainly the River Rhine and also the River Meuse. This line shows for one meter sea level rise, this is the amount of land that will disappear under the salt water. Bangladesh is one of the countries going to be most affected by climate change. Beside the threat of sea level rise, the second impact of climate change in Bangladesh is the increase of cyclones, both in magnitude and in frequency. That means a higher number of cyclones with higher velocities occur. The third mega issue is migration. There will be people who will be affected and they will have to leave. If it's induced by extreme events like cyclones or floods, they have to leave for a short period. They want to come back. But if it is badly affected ecosystem that cannot bounce back easily, then they have to leave for a long period or leave for times to come for the generation to come. And this results in the climate-induced migration. Climate change affects us all. But countries have different capacities of how to adapt. The Netherlands have several centuries of history in dealing with water, gaining land from the sea and protecting their houses from floods. The government spends a significant amount of money on protection measures like increasing the retention areas of the rivers or maintaining the 7,500 km dike system. This defense system includes mega projects like the Marsland Barrier. This movable barrier protects over one million people in the region of Rotterdam city from storm floods. Experts agree that the Netherlands are relatively well prepared for rising sea levels in similar incidents. In Bangladesh, the government is also taking preventative measures. People have started to build floating schools and houses. The inhabitants of Bangladesh have been adapting to extreme weather conditions like floods for a long time already. However, it is impossible to simply copy a dike defense system like in the Netherlands. The use of land in Bangladesh accepts floods to a certain extent and is even necessary for agriculture. Moreover, the sheer size of the country and of the Delta system, the lack of financial means and weaker institutions make it very hard to come up with a similar level of protection to the Netherlands. And so the new second generation, if you like, of adaptation thinking is thinking about how do we assist people to actually move from where they are now and have different livelihoods in different places. Mm -hmm.
খেন্ত দিলাম ভাই এইখানে ইতি করি খেন্ত দিলাম ভাই তাড়াতাড়ি যাই ওরে মানব মুক্তি চলে যাচ্ছে তাড়াতাড়ি যাই The region of Sirajanj is located north of the capital Dhaka, close to the river Jumuna. That is one of the major rivers of Bangladesh. In that region, many people are affected by river bank erosion. Land close to the river is cheap, so mostly poor people build their houses there. The river bank erosion brings down the side and people do get displaced, their whole houses. their housing their habitat everything comes down villages after villages and that does have serious impact when my house fell into the river i could only save some pieces the rest was lost in the river i had to leave my village of origin because of river bank erosion in the second village where i lived the same happened to me My house simply fell into the water. I had to live in a hut close to a road before I came to this village where I'm finally safe. People in the village Baf Digulia on the Char, a river island, depend upon agriculture. All of the 700 inhabitants have been displaced by rivers. The migrants do not only suffer from losing their shelters, but in addition from other impacts of climate change. I have already lost my houses five times because of river bank erosion and each time I had to find a new shelter. For five months we did not have rainfall and there was only little rain in the previous two months. Our crops are in danger. Drought is increasing and we are losing trees. People are not only moving within their region, but also move to big cities like Dhaka. Lots of people who lost their livelihoods hope for a better life in the capital or simply do not have another place where to go. Dhaka is heavily struggling with overpopulation. Basic services do not work. Housing is not available. 40% of the Dhaka population lives in slums. Many people are working in the informal sector like street vendors. I got evicted from my village Kolya by Cyclone Cedar. I lost my cattle, my house, everything. My family and I tried to stay there, but we did not manage and we had to move to Dhaka, where we are living now for three years. I am a rickshaw puller. The job is very exhausting and I am not happy with my life in Dhaka. I have a piece of land in my old village close to the river, but part of the land has already been eroded. Sometimes I feel like going back there, but it is not possible. We are facing lots of trouble. When we are still living in the village, only my husband worked. Now I also have to earn money. I work in domestic support. Hence I cannot take care of the children and they do not go to school anymore. Some move within countries, some move across international borders. Uh, the numbers are very, very difficult to know. All we can say with some degree of certainty is that the numbers will increase because of climate change. In Bangladesh alone, a figure of 20 million over the period of time from the coastal area is likely to be displaced because if there is one meter sea level rise. Although the exact number of people that will be globally on the move by mid-century is uncertain, the scope and scale could vastly exceed anything that has occurred before. 
People in the least developed countries and island states are affected first and worst. This does not mean that we should sit on our hands and do nothing. There are lots of ideas and suggestions around. Well, the proposals and the solutions are very well known. It's a matter of getting the political will to do them. I think for that it would be important to have an additional protocol to the Geneva Convention, which at the moment uh, regulates who is a refugee and who is not. And I think we have to find something extra for climate migrants. Other solution can be skilled migration or the supported migration, because migration can be a very good adaptation strategy as well. The first solution is at the global level for us to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases. So those who are responsible for a certain amount of greenhouse gas will have to take responsibility of a portion of families, individuals, collectives of people who will be displaced. And it will be right of the displaced people to go to those respective countries which have caused the problem in the first place. So if we can ensure the right people's right to save water, safe sanitations, people's right to have a proper livelihood throughout the whole year, and people's rights to have a proper shelter and the land, people's access and control over their own land. Something that the EU could do, a very, very concrete step, is to include climate migrants under the subsidiary protection. So that would mean not granting them a full refugee status, but a related status. Then rich people everywhere, including Bangladesh, but rich countries, in particular the United States of America and Europe, and other rich countries have to take their responsibility, which they haven't done so far. Because of the policy in the Netherlands, we want to make very clear that we are, yes, we are in a delta area, yes, we are close to the sea, but um, no, uh, the system is uh, safe enough to stay here. We are not going to move to Germany. The people of the Netherlands are well protected. Not like Rima and Endura Khatun, who lost their houses in the rivers, or the family of Delwa Hossein, who had to move to the slums of Dhaka. The people of Bangladesh are already struggling with forced migration caused by climate change. Dinigele din arpa bena dinigele.